You're listening to Question Reality. Question Reality with Priscilla Leona. Priscilla Leona. Hi! Hey! Boy, that went so fast. I was totally unprepared. Oh, okay. Hi, everybody. Another Monday, another manic Monday for me. Uh, welcome to the Question Reality Radio Show. We are coming to you live from Los Angeles, California. And I am Priscilla Leona, the creator and the producer of the show, and also the host. And along with our favorite Batman Cave technical director, Albert Bico, who makes things happen back there, um, let me tell you a little bit about our show in case you haven't been here before. Uh, for over 20 years, uh, we've been providing listeners in the entertainment industry career, entertainment career advice. And this show is for you if you are questioning your career reality uh, about possibly pursuing a career in the entertainment industry, or if you're already working in the entertainment industry and you just want some tips and advice to elevate your career, make it to the next level, move on up to the east side. Yes, that's what we do here. That's what our guests do. Um, some of the guests on our show have included uh, Oscar nominees. We've had Emmy winners, Grammy winners, Tony Award winners, reality TV stars. I got to say they're my faves. Uh, you know what a big reality TV fanatic I am, <clears throat> especially 90 Day Fiance and Love Before Lockup. Yes, don't judge me. You learn a lot of stuff watching these shows. I can deliver a baby. I can actually uh, do pimple popping. Yes. Oh, I can tell you the stuff I've learned watching these shows. Uh, we have film and TV, radio, music, uh, theater producers and directors. We have casting directors. We have talent agents. Um, I'm sorry, casting directors, talent yeah, I said that right. Talent agents. We have PR agents. We have talent managers, publicists, screenwriters, uh, authors, writers, novelists, which are not necessarily the same thing. I get a lot of questions about that. Um, we have actors and we have singers and dancers and models and we have musicians and we have bands too. We get bands on here. Yeah, we squeeze them in. Um, we have comedians, script supervisors. I like to do a lot of behind the scenes people uh, because people can't come out here to be stars and celebrities and they find out that they love doing the job of the script supervisor. I've had that happen like three or four times. It's amazing. It's interesting. Uh, we have celebrity makeup artists. We have fashion, celebrity fashion designers, entertainment lawyers. The list just goes on and on and on. Basically, if they're working in the entertainment industry, I am going to lasso those little suckers onto this show just so you can find out all about the trials and tribulations of pursuing a career in the entertainment industry and what their job entails and how to do it. So we need, we get tips, tips, advice, and resource information. We motivate, inspire, and educate. That's what I want to do. That's what I've been doing over 20 years. So hopefully I can continue doing it. Now, I would love for you to follow us because if you missed any of our past shows, here are some ways that you can watch us. <clears throat> Number one, you can go to our official website, which is questionrealityradioshow.com. Uh, you can watch us on uh, Question Reality Radio Show on Facebook and our social media. We're, excuse me, we're on, I think I'm verklempt over here. You're going to hear me going, ah, 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 ah. Uh, it's tacky, but what am I going to do? I got, I'm so verklempt. I don't know what it is. I think because when you drink a lot of milk, you get that, uh, let's not use the, the, the nasty word, but I'm going to use it. Phlegm. You got phlegm. It's a medical term. Um, and I think that's what I did. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm going to die before we finish the interview today. I feel it coming on. You're going to watch a live death. Um, 
Okay, so uh, go to web to our website, questionrealityradioshow.com, and you can watch the videos. They're posted on the 2024 schedule next to the guest. Uh, we have uh, at Question Reality Radio Show on Facebook. You can watch it live there. And then on our social media pages, YouTube, you can watch it on YouTube, uh, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn. Licked in. Oh my God, that sounds like a porno site. Licked in. <gasps> I think I just gave somebody an idea to create a soft core porn site. Lickedin.com. <gasps> I didn't mean to do that, but what are you going to do? Uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, which is now X. Now, all of these are under Priscilla Leona mining. Which brings me to my tip for the week, as it is every week, because I'm going to drill it in. I'm going to drill it, drill it, drill it. And hopefully if one person follows this advice uh, and becomes an A-list celebrity, I will be happy. Branding. Please, when you are pursuing a career in the entertainment industry, actually in everything you pursue, you need to keep your branding consistent so that people can find you on the browsers and on the social media sites. Usually you want to choose your name, but if you have a common name, you can add your middle initial or the actual whole name. Um, you can add uh, John Smith actor, John Smith singer, something like that. But please don't go, I get my groove on Friday nights. Uh, something cute. It's just going to ruin your reputation. It's just going to just destroy it. It just, people cannot find you under these things. And so people continue to do it thinking that they are going to get a cute name. It's going to stand out. But professionals look at that and go, mm, 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 mm. nope, next. Just telling you, been doing this for many, many years. My friends are all A-list casting directors, directors, producers, and they say, as soon as we see things like that, we go next. So just telling you. Now, favor. We kindly, very kindly ask that if you like our show and our guest, uh, that you please help us out by subscribing to our YouTube channel and also following us. Uh, on all the social media sites, which, uh, as I said, are Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok, uh, you name it. <coughs> Excuse me. Go there, follow us, and you know what? We will follow you back. Now, that is a great trade, right? Offer, say, everybody says, oh, follow me, subscribe, but nobody offers to do it back for you. And I thought, you know, that's what's that. That's what's going to help. Uh, offering to follow people back. So that's a little tip for you too. If you uh, want people to subscribe to your channel and follow you, say, "Hey, you know what? If you follow me, I promise that I will follow you back." And never ever break a promise. I'm very big on that. So little tip, two tips today. We're winning here. Winning. Um, <laughs> Booked. Let's see. How can you be booked on our show? Well, we usually are booked six months to a year in advance. I was booking a year in advance, but oh, it turns out that when I book bands or some film people, by the time their date comes along, they're on tour, which is just what happened recently with uh, a band that I booked. They're now on tour. <laughs> Didn't tell me that. But uh, it happens. I'm used to it. So now we're booking uh, just six months in advance. So if you want to be booked uh, as a guest on the show or refer someone to showcase their uh, themselves or their products or their projects uh, or just help listeners uh, by providing sage advice, then uh, we ask you to email me directly at PriscillaLeona at Yahoo.com. Leon at yahoo.com uh, or you can go to our official website which is question reality radio show.com and submit it's a really easy quick process go to the contact link and just your name and your email and your website 
and that's it. And then, oh, oh, upcoming shows. Why do I have that? Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. On the website, questionroundingradioshow.com, um, if you go to our 2024 schedule, uh, you will be able to see all of the upcoming uh, exciting people on the show. And let me just, you know, I got to tell you about some people that are coming on that I think, ooh, 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 this is very, very important uh, if you are pursuing a career in the entertainment industry as an actor or a musician. Because, let's see, we have, oh, or a fashion designer. On April the 1st, we have celebrity fashion designer Bernie Martin. He has had his stuff shown, his clothing, I should say, uh, shown um, at the Oscars one year, I believe. And on April the 8th, we have, oh, I love this guy. Ah. He is an A-list casting director. His name is Alan Hooper. Uh, you might know him from casting Modern Family for all those years and Superior Donuts and just a whole bunch of stuff. He casts everything. And then very exciting, my very good friend, Mary Lou Belli. She is probably up to five times, a five-time uh, primetime Emmy-winning um, director. And uh, she, God, she's right now she's casting the Miss Pat show, but you might know her work from NCIS New Orleans. Uh, oh, gosh, just go on IMDb.com and look up, <coughs> excuse me, Mary Lou Belli, and you will see all of her A-list credits. And again, she is a multi-prime time uh, Grammy winning, is it Grammy? No, Emmy winning, Emmy winning uh, director. And uh, very exciting, we have on April 22nd, Miss Arizona. Yes, we do. Tasha Dixon. That's going to be very exciting. Who doesn't want to meet a beauty queen, especially my male audience? And um, I'm so excited. April 29th, ah, uh, my friend, Michael Orland. Ah, who's Michael Orland? Michael Orlin was the musical director for American Idol for 16 years, and he is coming on to give tips, advice, and resource information on how you can make it in the world of music. And then Mary Lou, uh, Tasha will be giving advice about how to <laughs> join beauty pageants or pageantry work or maybe tips. I, we don't know what we're going to ask her. I make it up on the day up because, you know, I like to keep it fresh. But Mary Lou Bella is very good if you want to pursue a career as a television director. She gives great advice. So go to my website uh, and mark your calendars. Okay, that is it. We are on for the exciting part of the show. It is going to be to tell you a little bit about our sexy guy. Now, you know me. You know I love a sexy man. You know I try to, I have all my minions out there looking for the sexy men to bring on the show. And tonight is no exception. We've had him on the show several times. I've been trying to snag him to come to LA, which he has a couple of times, but our schedules have conflicted. But one day we're going to make it happen. A uh, little sexy thing. Oh, I want to put him He's like a little sprinkle on a donut for me. His name is Rico Mangram, but he goes as Rico No Suave. Uh, look at that. Isn't he beautiful? Oh, I want to just bite his cheeks. I'm biting him now. I'm biting him, Rico. So uh, Rico No Suave Mangram, he is a chef and a talk show host and an MC and executive producer. And I want you to go to his website. It's the Rico No Suave Show dot com. <coughs> Excuse me. I, I am going to be coughing. I apologize. Let me try to take a little... Uh, <laughs> Let me try to take a little cough drop. I don't know 
what's going on over. It's so dry in LA. It's dry right now. Uh, again, the website is the Rico no Suave show.com. You also can find him on all the social media sites. Um, at uh, Rico, let's see, YouTube. Let's do the YouTubes. YouTube, Rico No Suave Show on YouTube. Let's see if he kept it consistent and followed my, my format. Let's see. All right, YouTube, Rico No Suave Show. Yes. YouTube, Cooking with the Cooking with Rico Show. Yes. Facebook, Rico Suave Show. Yes, check. Instagram, Rico No Suave Show is one of the Instagrams. And his other one is Cooking uh, with Rico Show. Look at him following all of the tips. Not that he got them from me. I believe he knew this on his own. But he is whipping it up. Whipping it up right. Now. Um, Rico, Rico No Suave, Man Graham, he has a dynamic talk show called, obviously, Rico No Suave, where he interviews guests from all walks of life, and uh, he brings mm, about, I've watched his show, it is it just electrifying, it's an electrifying show, and Rico is dynamic, he's entertaining, he's Sparky and spunky, and he has a really sharp wit, which I love in a man, uh, in anyone, <laughs> especially men. You know what a pervert I am, everybody. Uh, but he, I like how he has direct questions, and his uh, direct questions infuse high voltage energy into every conversation, turning his interviews into really uh, robust and synergistic uh, dialogues. And he likes to delve really deep into their personal and professional realms. I don't dig too deep and personal. I like to keep it light, but I do appreciate a person who can do that uh, and keep it up, keep it flowing. And he really has that natural gift of being a talk show host that can do that. I have been keeping my fingers crossed uh, actually everything crossed my eyes and and uh ears i don't think you can cross your ears but my eyes and fingers and toes and legs that he gets a late night talk show because i'm telling you i loved arsenio hall i can totally see him as a arsenio hall too i hope that doesn't offend him but i love that man so much and i just thought he brought so much to television and I can really see him doing that. I hope that works out for him. And he has some other podcast shows. He's extremely ambitious. I love it. His other podcast shows are Cooking with Rico. Um, and and I, I did not know initially that he was just a, a culinary wizard. But when you watch the show, you're going to step into his culinary world and he calls it of course obviously cooking with rico where he whips up these tantalizing recipes and he has these uh tender demonstrations reminiscent of what he likes to call love making so i don't know we're gonna talk to him about that i don't i know cooking is sexy but i'm wondering how far he goes i i just want to know how he whips that into the conversation now the second uh show he has is called actually third is uh cooking with a cause and this is a new mission that Rico is on uh, to make a difference uh, with this show. It's a groundbreaking show that pairs celebrity cooking assistants with Rico to serve up delicious meals at shelters and churches and senior homes. And that, my God, must spread joy and just really adds culinary diversity because I do believe that he can cook all different types of culinary cuisine Um I know he has a specialty, I believe, but we'll find out. 
but I think that he he's bringing a whole bunch of different culinary diversity. And the last show is called NASCAR Moment. And Rico introduces the NASCAR moment within his show, and he offers viewers a pulse on the latest racing updates and affairs. Who knew? Did not know that my little Rico was a NASCAR fanatic. So that's something new that we're going to talk about. And with uh, each episode, apparently Rico's commitment to keeping his show fresh and engaging just shines through and it ensures an, an unforgettable experience for the audience. And I can believe that that actually is true because I have been on his show. He's been on my show a couple of times and I believe every single thing that, that, uh, that I just mm, researched and read to you. <laughs> I do believe that. So without further ado, let's bring that little hottie on. Welcome, Rico! Rico no suave! How you doing, love? <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm out of breath. You got a long damn bio going on, doing all crazy stuff. I honestly don't know why you haven't had a meltdown yet. <laughs> I mean, that sounds like a nervous <laughs> breakdown waiting to happen with all that stuff. <laughs> wow. Oh, no, my I, God. I tell you, but I think you're just used to that. Um, I When I was doing my research on you, I know you're a native of Chicago, and those people have, like, energy out the wazoo. I, I don't know. It must be the cold, brisk weather over there. But you grew up on the south side. Yeah. And uh, in a musical family. Yes. And yes. Um, eventually finding your your rhythm in salsa dancing. So tell me about when Rico was a little boy. Tell me what it was like living in your family, in a musical family. I, you know, my my father, rest in peace, he, he was uh, a jazz player where he played, you know, Latin jazz as well as you know, he played just piano. And then, of course, he went to the gospel route. So he started playing gospel. Uh, so he started playing Christian music as far as a piano player. But he was big time jazz, though, big time jazz, where him and Ramsey Lewis was very good friends. Uh, and I was, you know, I was a little kid. I was a little kid just listening to my my, my father. My mom uh, was a singer. So my mom actually was singing. Uh, and she would sing around the house and it would just the melody of everything that she actually had you know we would just you know dance and you know coming up as you know coming up as a young a young boy you know i actually you know came up with you know a, a hyper family i mean our family was hyper we danced a lot we laughed a lot we joked a lot and when we got serious it's like really deep it's almost as if you had like the happiness and then where it really gets deep is when you get serious and you can you can definitely tell that the emotion is definitely there because we like laugh hard but then we love deeply hard as well as when we're serious as well too so growing up in a musical family you know you you get the the genres of all different types of music um that you know you get accustomed to and, you know, and for me, it, it was, of course, it, it was always, you know, filling out the beat, the rhythm, right? The rhythm of everything. So, of course, you know, growing up, you know, I when I had my first car, it was a 1979 Chevy Malibu. And music, we always played loud music. It was just because it, it the vibrant of the music just kept me going. And I think because of doing that time, they knew that Rico was coming when they actually heard my car coming and it was, it was hit the windows down, of course, in the summertime. And it was just more of, you know, uh, letting people know how happy you can actually be as far as with music. So growing up in the family disciplined me in a way of making sure that I take that out to the world where people know that if you pull up on the side of me, I play some music, I want you to smile with me and dance in your car. So now yeah. don't tell me you have one of those cars that like thumped up and down like they No, no, the hydraulics. <laughs> yeah, the hydraulics. You had the music in no, the hydraulics. No, I didn't I didn't I didn't have that. No, not at all. 
Um, so, so uh, that music was jazz, but um, it, it, you said that it eventually uh, found you pursuing uh, rhythm and salsa dancing. But before the salsa dancing, I yeah. think you pursued a diesel engineering career. So, yeah. So, <laughs> wow, you took me back. Yeah. So in my diesel, diesel engineering um, like at first when I was going through college, I wanted to actually work on planes and trains. That was mm -hmm. one of my big things. And when I actually was, um, doing that, um, you know, I went to college and then I saw a computer that was open and it automatically just changed my ways. Like, what is that? It was like an old school computer and you saw, it, and I'm like, what is that? And it was like a bright light just falling out of the air like an angel. And I'm like, I want to work on that. So I changed it to computer science. But diesel engineering, I always want to work on because I love planes. Whenever okay. I see a plane, I'm always looking up. I said, man, I got to be up there. I got to be up there. I got to go to my next city. So, yeah. So uh, you didn't start saving for your Cessna, huh? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, no. One day you'll have a Cessna. And uh, so then you are saying, did you end up graduating with a degree in yeah, uh, computer, computer science. science? Yeah, and then, and then I then came back and did a trade. I came back and did a trade um, at back then. It was called Computer Learning Center because, you know, yeah. in school it wasn't it wasn't. Um, how can I say it? It wasn't a way of, you know, in college, it was just more book knowledge. It wasn't mm -hmm. more of, you know, here's your hands on a computer. You were typing on a computer, but you wasn't really doing too much. Um, right. And then I came back and I actually went to get uh, my certificate, my certificate from Computer Learning Center. Yeah. Um, so then you went to work in the IT world. Yeah. What What was that like? I mean, when Ooh. you having knowing who you are today, sure. did that make you feel stagnant working that Monday through Friday nine to five? No, or? not necessarily. No, I think you know IT is always a good love because what it does, what it did for me was it helped me troubleshoot humans. Right. And it also helped me understand people problems because every problem came to me when something is broke. I had to fix it. And I think for me, it was more of me trying to make sure that whatever I was troubleshooting, I was troubleshooting what the what the user was doing. Yeah. And then I will fix what the user was doing in order to make it right. So when it came to that process, it really disciplined me a lot. It, it taught me a lot as well, too, mm -hmm. when it came to IT. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, it, so it helped you keep focused and organized um, because being an entrepreneur that you are today, I mean, you have to have the basic skills yes. of organization and being able to understand business. And right. you just have to. I mean, you can be an artist, but you... If you just want to be an artist and not deal with the reality of business, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Yeah. And so many celebrities who lost all their money, but we won't talk. <laughs> so you, so you're working in your IT world, and sure. and then you discovered a passion for salsa dancing. Yeah. And apparently, you became a master, master salsa dancer, <laughs> and that ignited a teaching career at a nightclub. So what does that mean? You went and taught salsa dancer at a nightclub? So at first, it was it was more of me just dancing salsa. You know, remember, I was dancing ever since I was little. But when it was time for me to go and I and someone approached me and say, hey, you know, everyone here. You know, you've been dancing for quite some time. People love to see you dance. Have you thought about teaching? And I was nervous because, you know, at first it was like 30 people in a class. It was my first class, 30 people in my class. And wow. I uh, I had a dance partner, uh, Isabella, and she came in. She came in to help as well, too. And then, you know, we kind of formed that group called How to One Salsa. But I think, you know, when I was nervous, I asked my dad, I said, Papa, what do you think? And he was like, I think you should do it. 
Uh, I think the reason why you should do it is because you have the passion. You're funny like me. And I'm like, and you have the the great looks like me. I was like, Dad, come on. Uh, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Uh, and he said, yeah, I think you should. I, I'm, I'm going to push you to be able to do it. So my dad said, go right ahead and do it. And uh, I took that first step. And people, you know, people congratulated me afterwards. And they knew that I was nervous because I was sweating. Oh, my goodness. Oh. It was like you were talking like really super fast and I was trying to slow it down because I had so many things that I had to do. And I was like, ah, and yeah, but it was it was good, though. It, it felt good. It felt good after the first one. And then they just continued to ask me to come back and do it again. And because of this hot on one salsa, this uh, it, it cultivated a, a renowned dance group. And yeah. you. Mm -hmm. Did you take that dance group into the wedding events? No. Uh, well, technically, yes. Technically, yes, because when I started getting into the weddings, um, because I was teaching for so long, you know, mm -hmm. one of my students came and asked me, hey, can you do a salsa class at my wedding reception? I just want to get mm -hmm. the people dancing. Mm -hmm. I was like, mm -hmm. okay. I said, uh, sure. So I went there and I did the class. Now I did it just as if, I was doing the other class, right? And mm -hmm. by then, I think, man, I think I was like, I want to say I was like maybe like six or seven years in. Yeah. Um, and it was it was amazing. You know, it was amazing. And someone came and asked, hey, would you, you know, would you like to be an MC? Or would you, I think you should be an MC. It was a DJ that was there. And he said, hey, I think you should be an MC. And, you know, once again, there's a nervous standpoint of things. And I was like, well, I don't know. I don't know. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> then he, said, he said, you should try it. So then I did. I'm like, OK, let's go. So I tried it. I was nervous, fumbled a little bit. And then the MC thing just took off from there. So. So yeah. so uh, what did you have to do as an MC? Is that putting all the uh how do you figure out what songs to do and what do you get together with the with the coordinator and how does that work i always wondered how the hell does that work so so with an mc one of the things is is that remember the mc is the one that makes all of the announcements you know that from like celebrities right, when right. they get an announced and things like that in the back right. end there is always a timeline Right. There's a timeline of the events by, you know, uh, point A, point B, point C, point, yeah. th uh, point D. Right. So right. for me, the DJ is the one that actually usually have to worry about the music when I'm just the MC. Ah. I'm just the one to introduce the bridal party. Then I introduce the, the wedding couple. Ah. Then I introduce the cake, the first dances, the as far as making sure that everyone has a great time dancing which i already know about right yeah. so which is good right <laughs> right so i guess you were getting out there and kind of doing a little salsa yeah a i was couple doing licks in the salsa right exactly People yes happy and i would imagine you had to add some jokes yes it, you gotta add fun. jokes yes and now out of that all yeah. of those experiences uh, I think you wrote a book called um, Rock Your Weddings. Yes. <laughs> right? Now, what inspired that and how, who was that gear, who was the audience and how do you rock a wedding? So I think because of the, the, the stamina that I have when it comes to the energy of doing a wedding, um, a lot of the weddings um, of newcomers, new weddings, newlyweds, you know, people that's getting into the business needs to understand the importance of each piece of the puzzle to be able to make it a really nice dream wedding or a special wedding. And one of the things is I, I talk about, hey, this is what you need as a DJ. This is what you need as a photographer. This is what you need as a videographer. This is what you need as a wedding coordinator, a wedding planner. And these are the things that you want to look out for when it comes to everybody putting things together. Mm -hmm. um, and to rock the wedding, you've got to make sure that everyone is doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing at all times. Mm -hmm. So I, I wrote the book because, you know, someone came and asked me, would you want us to write a book for you? 
Mm-hmm. And okay. and then they said, because you're in um, the name of the company is Special Cajun Events. I said, sure, let's do it. So they wrote they wrote the book and man, um, it was good. Then they put it up on Amazon and, you know, I, I had the book. Is it still in print? It's still it is. In print? Uh, it's not in print, but it's online. It's online. A Kindle like version? Kindle. Kindle? Okay, because yep. I have to get that. My cousin is getting married in Italy. And I think that would be a nice little gift for her. Awesome. Don't you think that would be good? I think so. I think it would give them tips in regards to what they need to look out for. Uh, I think that will definitely help them to help if they're trying to plan. And that's a problem because sometimes, you know, uh, wedding couples like to plan their own wedding. And then sometimes they miss a certain thing or they miss certain things and they really can't enjoy their wedding because they don't have someone doing it for them. Right. And that's the problem. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. You know, I'm going to get that book too, because I throw a lot of events, birthday parties nonstop. And I think I could apply that. I don't think it just would be for weddings. I think I could find a lot of useful information for any event. Exactly. Just substitute and swap things out. That's correct. I'm going to get your book. I just (laughs) wish I could get a, Autograph copy. Yeah. <laughs> I'll come um, there directly and sign it for yeah, you. Yeah, <laughs> sign my Kindle. How's that gonna work? All right. Uh, now, um, you so when so the book, uh, do you plan on writing uh any other books in the future about yeah. anything? Have you I thought think about I that? think I mean I think for like my life. Cookbook? Yeah, cookbook is definitely in play. Um, cookbook is, is definitely in, in play and, you know, big shout out to Beatrice for that. Cause she was the one that says, I think you need to definitely put the cookbook together yeah. and, you know, put the ones that you actually put together and some that's dearest to you, um, you know, maybe from when you were growing up and things that you eat, uh, you know, that, that you ate and then go from there. So that's definitely in the horizons as well. I like that. Now you, so, okay, let's go back to, all right, you're doing your events, your salsa, salsa mm-hmm. around town. <laughs> and um, <laughs> so, so these appearances, um, they, I guess you collaborated with a dance partner you had at the yes. time. Uh, mm-hmm. Valerie, who I met, yep. lovely mm-hmm. girl, uh, yeah. Valerie Marino. So she, she was she was your salsa partner. So yes. I guess a lot of people kept coming up to you. And how did that happen? You and Valerie out there salsa dancing. And uh, what did people just keep coming up and say, hey, you yeah. <laughs> have a talk show? I mean, how did it happen? From well, I think, I, I think because of when Isabella, uh, when Isabella left, she actually left to go to California, but she also went back to go to school as well, too. So Valerie was already working with How to One Salsa. So she actually came in and we started teaching classes uh, together. And then um, and we had some other people like Maribel. Maribel also was actually teaching classes, but Valerie was the, there to stick it all the way through as far as with uh, the salsa classes. Uh, as well too and and as a group so it, it was I think it was like eight of us I think it was around eight of us that we actually had for how to one um uh-huh. but you know things started dwindling it apart because we started doing more promotion and just started focusing on the teaching we wasn't too much as far as on like a dance group or anything like that but we mm-hmm. focused more on the teaching piece um and then yeah and then I you know of course I took a break as far as from promoting because it started getting exhausting so um, I found my love, of course, always want to be on TV as a talk show host. And then, you know, I got, um, I got picked up for a little bit, um, by a radio company. Uh, they had their own station, but that was only for like two months. And then, um, I said, I want to start my own, uh, talk show. And, and then once I started my own talk show, that's when, um, Valerie came to play. It's like, Hey, I want to do that with you. So we got together and and start you know working that out and it, it was good it was good yeah. yeah so 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 the the journey you you have done so many things at that point yeah and then you decide to do your talk show so yeah. let's try to inspire 
people or maybe give some tips and advice on what people can do to start their own podcast show. Now, a lot of people think, oh, I'm just going to get a mic. And I'm yeah. Just gonna talk. Yeah. And, oh, there's so yeah. much more that they're not thinking about. Can we, we give you your expert advice? So what did you do when you were deciding to start Rico No Swine? First of all, yeah. why did you come up with the title? Let, you know I'm all about the titles. Where did you come up with that Rico No Suave? So Rico, yeah. So there, there's already a Rico Suave, right? Rico Suave oh, yeah. from Ecuador. So it's like, you yeah. know what? Let me put a no in there. I'm yeah. going to put a Rico No Suave, even though people do call me like Rico Suave when I'm dancing salsa. I say, you know what? Let me put Rico No Suave. So people be be like twisted and they're like, oh, I like that. I like the way you put the no in there because right. Rico Suave is already there. So that's why I came up with Rico now, no Suave. Was Rico Suave, wasn't he? Um, he, uh, he was a one, like a, a one hit wonder guy yeah. with uh, a hit. I don't remember the song. Do you remember the song? It was called Rico Suave. Rico and, Suave. Yeah, it was. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's 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 what with I. With the white shirt and a yeah. wind flowing. <laughs> I'm confusing him with Fabio now. I've no. seen Fabio, but I know <laughs> that it's not Fabio. Rico. Yeah. No, I'm gonna have to go look him up on YouTube. But I know that uh, there was a lot of jokes about Rico Suave sure. but I think that that's because he I think he intended it to be like that I don't think that he was taking himself seriously I think that he thought hey this is a good gimmick and it worked yeah it so worked um, it worked very well and yeah. <laughs> so all right so you just saw you and Valerie go hey well you said hey I'm gonna start my own talk show but you and Valerie get together and talk me through the process of how you set up Rico No Suave. So the one, the one biggest thing, there's big pieces to the puzzle when you're starting off. And I really, you know, and I, I know people think of it as, as a podcast and I'm going more, of course, you know, going more towards Hollywood and going more towards the talk show and thank you so much for the uh, Arsenio Hall. Yes, I used to watch him all the time. That is a compliment, beyond compliment. So, um, and and yes, that's the type of talk show that I'm 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 moving towards uh, in regards to that. Um, but throwing a little bit of a Latin feel to it as well too. So, um, I'm definitely looking to actually you know get in there. I see Jacqueline Murphy is on. Jacqueline Murphy, thank you so much because we've been talking as well too. So. Uh, about some great things that's going to be coming up. But how to start a talk show in general. I think it, it does come with training. Um, and it also comes in how you communicate with your guest or you communicate with people. The yeah. first thing before you even want to step as far as on the oh, step in front of a camera or be able to be presentable in front of a camera, you have to understand the type of angles, what you're what you're wearing what you look like, and then kind of grow from there, right? I think for me, because we started off with just, you know, the the t-shirt and we was like, okay, let's brand ourselves. Let's look at it, you know, from a branding standpoint, let everybody know it is the Rico No Suave show. Let's put a little back, let's put a background of what we could get from Walmart, you know, a background and have, you know, one speaker and then we'll bring in a guest and we'll have one six foot table and let's just at least get it started. And one camera, that was it, one camera. It was a Mevo camera. So people need to understand that you have to start off somewhere. If you want to become a podcaster and you want to just do just that, then you have the audio and you also have the visual, right? But if you're gonna become a podcaster, what type of podcaster, you have to understand what type of podcaster you want your audience to understand you as. You just can't what go your in there. Platform and start talking about is what you're, yes. I am so glad you said that, Rico, because 
uh, how many shows have you started watching podcasts and they just start talking and you're like, well, what the hell is your platform? What's your right. show about? Right. And they don't do introductions. I know it's repetitive every week, but sure. uh, there are new people tuning in. And if you just start talking, assuming that people know what the hell your show is about, you're going to uh, you're going to lose an audience member because you're That's not right. telling them what they what they're going to expect. So I'm That's so correct. glad that you said that. Continue. Yeah. So I think, you know, from that standpoint, you got to understand as far as who your audience is. And you also have to practice good conversation. You have to prepare your notes before someone comes onto your show. And I think what happens is, is that you might have a bio, but you got to come up with some really great questions for your guests. Yes. Right? It's very important because in order for you to be able to know how to interview people, you know how to basically get what you want to get out of them. Right. Okay. And, and for me, it was always because, you know, back in the day, I used to freestyle off of words. So when I used to freestyle off of words, it was always as if I took a word um, that somebody actually says and says, for example, disability. And then I might say, oh, there's a disability, but you technically have an ability to achieve your goals. And when you say that I have a disability because people don't understand that that doesn't stop me from having that ability to grow. Right. Right. So, and people need to understand that when you're actually talking to people, you want to basically relate to them, but you also want to give them something to think about. And I think for, you know, for me and, and a show and me and Valerie was re very good at that, where we were tag teaming and we were actually tag teaming in such a great way where it was it was allowing the guests to think and say, oh, my God, I didn't think about that question. Or we have a list of questions now, but feeding off of those questions was very important to us. Um, and the show just continued to grow. And big shout out to the people along our journey. You have to have a desk, right? Not just a table. You got to have a desk. If you have a desk, make sure you have a desk that looks presentable. If you're going towards TV, that's good. If you want to just have, um, and this was at the beginning now. This was, I was thinking of desks. You know, I was thinking of the Johnny Carson, you know, yeah. the Johnny Carson desk and things like that. Yeah. And um, just just having that and looking at those role models that, that I was looking at. But then you also start getting to more the modern. Okay, well, now forget about the desk now. Uh, and thanks to the desk from... Um, Myrna Bromley and and um, Gino, they actually bought the desk and bought some chairs for us and was like, hey, we got to make you guys look legit and then go from there. The next thing you know, we actually um, that's when, of course, thanks to Beatrice, she came in and say, let's redo this set now. Let's actually make it look like a talk show where you're sitting down, you're comfortable. And as you can see, this background, that's my background that we actually use for the talk show. And then um, from then on, it was just more of. What type of equipment do you grow with? What type of lighting? What cameras do you use? And start making it even bigger. So all of this, you got to have money over time to invest. So mm -hmm. always keep your daytime job. That's what I tell people. Keep your daytime yeah. job, right? Keep your daytime mm -hmm. job because that's going to save you in regards to where you want to actually go with um, building uh, a, a talk show. Um, and if you want to go more as TV, this is a great way. Visual all the time. If you want to go more joe rogan or more podcaster like and trying to get that hundred mil you know go right ahead and do it but it's just so many of them out there so i'm i'm trying to you know i'm working on my my journey to get that exclusive yeah option. yeah because it's not there are i'm so glad you said that because uh my show question reality uh radio show we were the one of the very first uh, podcast shows in 2008. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> very, very first people didn't even know what a podcast show was. And ours was actually a combination radio because we were at a radio station. And yet it was weird because it was a radio station, but it was a podcast show in a radio station. It was, yeah. weird. but it's grown since then. And most people, uh, we had it at a studio and I 
loved it because it was such a professional atmosphere. Mm -hmm. But it it gets expensive. It um, does. It does because you, uh, when you, I don't want to mention any names, but when you go with somebody that is offering that venue that you have it look where it looks exactly like you're in a radio station, which you are because it's all the equipment, it, they charge by the hour. And it can run 150 to $200 an hour. Wow. And imagine me paying that for 15 years. Wow. wow. And finally, I saw that so many people, because of technology, technological advancement, that they were doing podcasts right from their home office. And I right. thought, we have on home office and, <laughs> and my husband is a tech he doesn't he's a very humble person he doesn't like me to say it, but he is a software developer and he's a genius with computers he can take them apart put them together i'm like why am let's i go paying? it let's why go I, yeah why am i paying yes. you know all that money when he can run the show for me as the there you go coach. So I can put that money elsewhere. I got Snickers bars to buy. I can't be spending all my damn money. I got cheeseburgers and French fries. I don't care. But I, uh, so I, my point is that you, uh, you, I don't know how much you spent, but I, I want people to realize that anybody can do a podcast show. Don't be intimidated. Now I'm not saying, everybody because i have seen rico and i know you have too seen people who just say well i want to have a podcast show and they start a podcast show but they just i'm gonna i i'm a nice person and i am kind and i'm always looking for the positive but i'm sorry some people do not have the personality to be host of a podcast show you know I, you know you go i want to say i want to say one thing i want to say one thing about that to. i want them to i want yeah them but to. i think you know and i do watch some podcasts when they actually have guests on and and when one of the things when they bring on and they having a debate i don't call it an argument but sometimes it sounds like that when you actually yeah. are a guest or a host talking to the guest. Yes. The one thing I will never, ever say, unless they're really out of pocket, like if they really get out of pocket as far as on the show, but I would never say, I am the host, you listen. I brought no. you on to, you should never, no. ever no. say that. No. Don't I, 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 and it throws Have me you ever off heard myself. someone say that? I've yeah, never heard someone yeah. say, oh, I'm never I mean, heard even it. from a podcast that they actually have, when they're bringing someone on and they, the conversation that we have, you have to be able to let the person talk, understand yeah. what they're saying, come back with your words, let them talk, and then come up with an agreement. Come right. up with something where you can actually make something clear. And right. when I heard that it's my talk show, no, 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 you can't talk. I let you talk blow. And then that's when it just becomes into like that whole CNN debate and yeah, you know, things like, and I'm like, oh man, I, yeah. I don't see how they do it. That's like, I cannot I be that person. I, I, I can't, can't be that person. I can't. Albert watches that stuff, those political shows all day, every day. <laughs> and I can't. Rico, it drives me crazy. I'm like, I don't want to hear people screaming. And yeah. I, I know. It's I annoying. Want to better. I know more. I want to talk serious. I'm just, I'm all into happiness, sunshine, and flowers. Yes. I don't yes. want to have, I want to talk about things that mm, make life better or help people. But uh, what I was saying was, that um, I would love everybody to have their dream if they want to be a podcast host, but not everybody has the personality. Yes. Rico, as you know, you are a natural. You have you. the gift. Thank you. And so many people do. And I think I want to get my, and if you agree, I, 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 I sure or want to contribute. I think that maybe they could 
be a great podcast host if they find out what their genre is or their platform. Yes. Sometimes what I'm seeing is podcast hosts are trying to do an entertainment type show, mm. but they're very monotone and they're very dry and yeah. they don't have any life and i'm thinking no that's not your genre you gotta right. find something that's is serious there how there's many as you know many podcast shows with serious people doing serious shows oh, right but they right. don't want to do it it's just like you know my friend michael orland who was musical director of american idol he said oh my god priscilla you know you've watched the show people yeah. come on there and they think that they can sing like Karen <laughs> yeah. or Barbara Streisand and their mother have told him, oh my God, you're going to the greatest thing since Campbell's Soup. And I'm like, bitch, you cannot sing. Now, I am not listening to you. You cannot sing. But they're out of touch with reality. Well, it's the same thing with people trying to be podcast hosts. That you doesn't mean you can't be one if that's your dream. But do research and find what your genre and platform is. Yeah. And don't try to fit yourself into being like Rico No Suave yeah. here, <laughs> right? Who is exuberant and vibrant and exciting. And you can't take your eyes off of him. And you want to like hang out with him. And you want to like cut a piece of his hair off. <laughs> you want to like strip his skin and like do a army hammer where you fry it up with some oil and butter and pepper you want some rico skin and make some what are those things that Funyuns. you fry the, those that pig skin what's it the called the Chicharrones. 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 You want a piece of Rico. You want a chicharrones. But you know, that is uh, who he is. You were born oh. like that. You were born with a gift. Thank but you. it seems like um, people who are very quiet and mellow and low key, they would, they want to have a show like yours, right? You. And if they continue down that path, you unfortunately are going to stress yourself out because you're trying to fit yourself into a personality that is not natural. Right. So my question to you is what advice would you give people who are uh, trying, how do you find your genre if you if you don't know what it is some people are not meant to actually be in front of the camera yes some yeah. of them are meant to be directors right some people are there to actually probably hire their own host exactly. based off of the platform and genre of things that they want to actually be because if you're not if you're not outspoken if you're not like sociable, this this is you have to be able to be sociable to be able to get out there to yeah. be able to let people know who you are. You want people to know when you smile that they smile back, and then a conversation happens without you even saying anything. That's just like a hello, right? right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think for people <laughs> that that wants to become that podcaster or wants to become a talk show host, there's a lot of people watching you. Yes. And if, if there's a lot of people watching you, they're going to watch your reactions. They're going to watch your, you know, your mannerisms, your characteristics, how you deal with your, your staff, people are going to see that. And if you don't yeah. have that good image, it's just not going to work. And you have to work within yourself for that. You have to know that if there is someone that you want to train under, you can train under them as well, too, in order for that personality to come out the way it's supposed to be. Right. So um, I think, you know, I think overall, if you do have that personality that you're trying to get out, somebody else might need to be able to help you do so. Yeah. And there's lots of courses you can take. There yeah. are lots of books you can read and you can really, 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 really try hard if that's what you want to do. Don't give up your daydream. Yeah. Right? Um, yeah. But 
at some point, you got to watch yourself back. I would suggest, and I don't know what you think about this tip, but I would suggest before you go live, you should do maybe a mock show with somebody. Sure. Right? Mock you should show. practice. Yeah, practice, you should definitely practice before yeah. you, you know, go out there because you could be a deer in the headlights and that's right. going to cause you a lot of stress and anxiety. So right. do some mock shows. But I would... I would suggest not asking your mother and grandmother how you really are because they are going <laughs> to lie their asses off because it's their job. Right, right. Don't get online and ask for strangers' opinions because you know there are some trolls out there, right? That's People right. are going to tell you. They'll tell you. <laughs> so uh, along with that, you do have to have um, – you know, it's very important to have lighting, obviously. Yeah. What other tips would you? Would um, you you definitely got to make sure you have um, people to help you. Uh, meaning that for me, I have producers to help me with my show. Yeah. So, and big shout out to my team. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they, they, they know who they are. And, you know, my team itself is, you know, we got people that does lighting. We have people that do the audio. We have sound checks. Uh, we have people that's listening in to make adjustments to the audio if we need to. We have somebody watching the cameras. Uh, we have somebody that's running the production, just kind of like what, what you, you're doing right now, right? I um, used to have people that do it for me, Rico. Now I decided I didn't want to pay all that money. So now I'm running everything from my home office. And it's so different, Rico. It because is. Because you are running... I'm really glad that you're giving these tips because you, I used to be at that high elevated level where all I did was walk into the radio station and everything was done for me. Yep. And yep. I got used to that for 15 years. And then, and then prior to that, for six years, I used to be on cable, uh, uh, cable, a cable access television show, Warner Brothers. And so I had people do it for me. And then I decided, oh, I'm going to do it all myself. Oh, my God, Rico, it has been really, I took a hiatus a whole year off because I was burned out from 20 years of doing this, sure. which can happen. But when I started the show up this year, it was so different. And I wanted to know from you, because it sounds like you have a whole team. And I yeah. used to have two assistants and all that. But when COVID hit, things happened. Sure. And uh, so now I said, well, you know, I, I'm extremely detail oriented and methodical and organized. I'm like a micromanager. So I said, well, I can do it myself. Look at all my skills, right? <laughs> I got skills. I can do it. Yeah. Oh my God. I have had nothing but stress and anxiety nonstop because now Rico, you have a team, but look at what girlfriend has to do over here. I am I do the networking. I do the um, uh, what uh, the administrative stuff. I do the producing. I do the directing. I do the, well, Albert helps me with the technical, the lighting and stuff. But I've got to do all my own administrative stuff. And that's very hard because when a guest comes on, I'm not the type of person to half-ass shit. Right. I, I, I look at their uh, bio and... God knows, I don't know what you get, but I'm going to air a pet peeve for people who are listening. When people ask you for a one paragraph of career highlights, do not send people six to 10 pages. Rico, <laughs> I have to go through this. And like and you said, right? right? Because we got to create the questions. That's correct. Some people you know, just sloppily do it. But I read the bio and I like to pull out interesting questions that are not standard things. But when right. they send me, you know, six to 10 pages, oh my God, I lose my mind, Rico. Yeah. So no matter how much and what I love about you, oh my God, I got to tell you, you 
have your shit together. You are so highly elevated as a podcast producer because you have got, and I don't know if B did this for you or if you came up with the idea. I don't know how it happened, but you actually have a media kit. Yes. And you have everything that, that you people need to know about you. Correct. And all we have to do is copy and paste. So my yeah. tip is, please, as a podcast director, if you want to help your uh, producer, you want to help yourself out, make sure people do not send you stuff that's going to stress you out where you go, <laughs> I don't want to do the show anymore. I don't want to do it. I don't want to go through. Uh, And you know, I got some sort of OCD where I can't not read the 10 to 20 pages. I got to do it. I can't not do it. And so uh, it's, 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 it's very, um, very different doing it from my home office now. Very, very, very different. But it doesn't matter whether you have Rico's situation where he is, he is one, I think, one level below like having late night television uh, professional, right? Am yeah. I right? Because hey. you're saying you're doing it in a studio. You got people that do the lighting. You got you got assistants. You got all your shit going on over there. You got all the shorties running around, <laughs> right? And they're just yeah. doing their thing to please the Rico man. Thank you. I appreciate right? that. That means but, a lot. But you, but that is doing it right. But as you said, don't give up your day job because it's going to cost money. I imagine you have to pay. But yeah. let's talk about how you counter that Mm -hmm. the counter effect of that because you can opt with getting sponsors or advertisers i hate advertisers and sponsors i refuse i have never i was uh, rico i don't know if i told you but i was offered to take my show when i was at la talk radio i was offered because i have lots of celebrity friends and one of my celebrity friends said oh my god because she has a show on sirius and she said oh my god priscilla you your show your personality you could have a daytime television show you roseanne look out you know i all that you could do it i'm gonna would would you let me talk to uh the director and find out if he'll listen to the show so he did and then i got offered to take my show to sirius xm right let me tell you and i was gonna do it oh my god wait until you see that contract oh yeah so he listens Oh my God, you, your show has, we're, it's exactly what we're looking for. We're going to put you on at the night, night shift to start you out, but then we can move you up in the time slot. I'm like, okay, yay, yay, let's do it. Oh no, there is a contract where you have to, and I'm not going to get into details, but there's a contract you have to sign when you get to the Sirius XM level where you have to bring in your own advertisers and you have to bring in minimum one million dollars a year and that's a commitment that's a commitment so he's saying to me oh priscilla come on you you won't have any problem oh my god and you know i think to a certain point i mean this is a professional man so if he didn't feel that I could do it, he would never have offered me the contract because sure. Sirius XM is a show where they're serious, no pun intended. Right. They wouldn't have offered that. But he said, your format and your personality, you have the ability to grow. I really want your show. I want your format. And I was almost going to do it. But as a person who cannot, I feel trapped by contracts and I feel like signing anything is signing a, a deal with the devil. Yeah, well, I could, I couldn't do it. Yeah. I couldn't do it. So I turned down uh, for my show to be on Sirius XM. And 
I think that people have to realize that if that's something you're aspiring to, you should know that it's a business. It is. And you, you've got to sign that contract. They are not going to just let you bring your show unless you're a celebrity, of course. You know, like um, Howard Stern and, right. and oh, but he still has a contract, Rico. I'm he, sure. 15 million minimum. I'm sure. I'm so, sure. but he can bring it in. Right. I just felt so stressed out from doing that. But back to the point is, I did. I don't like the whole idea of bringing in sponsors for my show, and I don't really have a need to make money to do that. So. Right. I chose to not do that. But for people who are looking to supplement their income and monetize their show, can you give them some advice? Yeah. So I, I think one of the things about starting locally with different, you know, mom and pop shops that need that exposure, uh, yeah. that want to do some collaborations as well, right. too. I think if you start off with someone on that level or small businesses that want to get that exposure, you know, you basically can collaborate. Um, you can also do a collaboration of, you know, for example, uh, big shout out to my man, uh, Marcus Velasquez. We're doing something called Better Communication. Um, and Better Communication is an online training utility where he's actually training how to become a better communicator. So on my show, when if people go to that link, they get 10%. We get profit from that, right? So, and what happens is, is that you can build it that way where you collaborate with people in order for you to be able to get, you know, 50-50 split, right? You can get yeah. a 50-50 split however you wish when it comes to, you know, people buying certain products. Um, second of all, yeah, commercials are really good because if your numbers are up, um, then people are going to say, how, uh, how many viewers do you have? How many people do watch the show? How many people watch the show afterwards? And then if there's people that actually watch the show afterwards, then, hey, you know, um, that's a good way for you to be able to put ads and also you can get sponsors as well, too. Um, you also need to get out there and start networking with people. You get yeah. out there and start networking with people and people say, hey, what do you have a business? Oh, OK, how big is your business? Oh, OK, I have a talk show. Would you like to actually advertise on talk show? OK, we'll give you based off of how big your company is. This is how much it costs. And we'll run it twice. You know, we'll run it twice on the show. And. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll be like, hey, as long as it's actually being exposed and people can actually see it, you know, some people don't care about that, you know. Right. So that's that's the good advice I can give people. Right. Sure. And and that's and and then you can do things like to start out with. It's called trade for exposure. Yeah. Um, you can get lots of good shit that way. Yep. Um, yep. You know, if they don't want to give you money, because a lot of small companies, uh, mom and pops places, they don't really have money, but they have products. So yep. maybe you, you need a product. So to start yep. out, uh, that's a good way too. Yep. Now, I used to be what's called, I'm sure you're familiar with this, but I used to be what's called a media buyer. So basically uh, I bought time, air and space. So for example, for but one of my clients was Sears. So when they wanted to advertise something, uh, we would buy, put their ads in uh, on television, uh, radio, in print magazine. So basically, I I would do that. Yeah. And um, that is something that was the way they would track that they were called arbitron ratings right yep. so there used to be a way to track uh when an advertiser would spend money they'd be able to track uh how much was spent on radio the listeners how many people but now if you're not in that large medium and you're just a podcaster then the first thing they're going to ask you is uh, how do I know that I'm going to, if I give you money, how do I know that I'm going to get an ROI? A All right. Investment? Right. And so what are you saying to these people who you are going to, to, to get advertising dollars? Well, I think, I think one of the things is, is that you can't guarantee anything no. because these are just regular consumers. Right. right. These are people that view your show. But if it's something that they like, it's going to be based off of how good your product is. 
right? right? So if the commercial is a really nice commercial and people want to get involved with that, then people will get involved with that. I really think, and also, you know, product placement. If you put a product, you know, on a table mm -hmm. and it's being shown there and people are like, what is that? I want to know more about that. Then right. people want to inquire about it. Now, they might inquire about it even after the show is actually over, but it really depends on what that product is. And it's a gamble, right? It's a gamble with uh, yeah. with everything that you're doing. But as long as they see that you have the views, then yeah. they might have a, a chance to be able to say, hey, you know what? We're going to take a chance and see how this actually goes. And it's not just one time. You have to you have to continuously put things in people's faces in yeah. order for them to know. Yeah. But at least, I would say at least for like three to four months, at least. And and the way that it's being done now, and of course, correct me if I'm wrong, but the way it's being done now is, unfortunately, you've got to work your ass off building up your followers. Of you've course. got to get your views. Yes. You have to promote, 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 promote. And if you are not doing that consistently, you're gonna have a problem. So you're That's very right. lucky that you have people that are doing that for you. Yeah. But uh, we, we have to make people realize that if you wanna have a podcast show and you want to get out, if you wanna do it just as a hobby and you don't need to worry about it, fine. But if you wanna supplement your income and get advertisers, you have to promote nonstop. I have many friends that work in, for example, film distribution. And uh, this one guy, he's a friend of mine, he owns a film distribution company. He said, Priscilla, here's how it goes in one of our meetings. All right. So if we have comparable films and uh, we are trying to figure out, well, let's go back. Let's let's go way back. I have a, a friend I just had a conversation with. He's an A&R rep for, Cap, for a big record label, right? And he said, Priscilla, if you've got to do your own packaging today, you've got to do everything. You yeah. have to do your music. You have to sing and you have to dance. And you have to do your video and you have to do, everything has to be packaged today. Right. There are so many singers, right? And so many music that is that sounds so much alike. Here's what they call it comes down to. And this is relating to podcast shows as well. He says, if I have a couple artists that are comparable in looks and in talent and the music is the same, here's the deciding factor. How many followers do they have? How many it is. do they have? We're going to go with that artist and sign that artist who's actively not just has the views and the followers, but is actively promoting it. And they see that that person is actively promoting it themselves. Yeah. yeah. And and that's what it comes down to, to podcast stuff too. Yeah. Right? And that's why I, mean, I think that's also, you know, how we're building our, uh, our cooking show. Right. A cooking show as well, too. That's that's like a, a big thing. And some of my people that's on right now from the cooking show watching John T for free. He's actually he's actually the director. He's actually the director of the cooking show, Cooking with Rico show. Who, who is? Uh, uh, his name is John T. John Taylor. Yeah, but let's talk about John that T. cooking show, because the last time I had you on, you were I think you were just about to do the yeah. cooking show. Yeah. Just so getting started. Just getting started. So yeah. how, what have you done since then? How did you, oh. because you have a passion, obviously, yes. for cooking, but what did yeah. you do? So, you know, big shout out to my team, man. Big shout out to my team because, you know, my team has been working very hard and, you know, we, we come in to actually produce the film and uh, and then there's a lot of editing behind the scenes. And 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 John was that editor uh, at the very beginning and he's still, he's still editing, but he's actually, you know, helping to run. And we have a team of six. We have a team of six now. So um, basically I'm cooking internationally. So I'm cooking from all cultures. So it can be from Hungarian to Pakistan, Asian, Italian, uh, of course, Latin. Um, we're cooking African. We're cooking every, I'm cooking everything. And it's cool because 
you're understanding the seasoning, you're understanding the culture behind it, you're understanding the flavors behind it, but they're all street food. So it's not just gourmet, it's not gourmet, it's, it's street food, kind of like a little bit of gourmet touch to it. Are so, you doing all of this in a commercial kitchen where you're filming it in a commercial so, kitchen? Uh-huh, we have a commercial kitchen and also I'm doing it in a studio too. Uh, in a loft where I have the island. So if you see on the YouTube Cooking with Rico show, you'll see the loft, right? You'll see exactly what I'm cooking. And then I have episodes in a commercial kitchen as well. Okay. Did you have to get any uh, health code uh, uh, certificates or? Yeah. Uh, yeah, because I know there you can't just whip it up into in a kitchen. <laughs> Film and tell us about the process. With so that. I think I, I think um, there's always uh, certification as far as culinary school and you get your certifications. But nowadays you you can actually based off of where you're going to do the show. Some of them require that you have some type of a certification. Um, I think for myself, it's more of a food handler, being able to handle food in certain areas. Um, and some do not. Some you can just go in there and just start cooking, uh, and then yeah, just start like I, like I wanted. I wanted you to when you came out here. I wanted you to come and cook at a couple of uh, my I know friends' houses. Yeah, and my one friend said he's not cooking my damn house. Where's his certificate? Does he have the? Dude, he he's asking all these questions. I'm like, I don't know if he has. I think he, <laughs> we could bring a fire extinguisher, but and he's like. No, well, you know what happened, blah, blah. and there's so many questions. I'm like, oh my god, I don't know what he. Has. But the next time I talk to him, I'll ask him if yeah. he has some sort of certification that says. He said, what if he comes in and burns my damn house down? Oh my goodness! <laughs> so dramatic. You know how actors are. So, uh, what? So, but you're cooking in a commercial kitchen. Yeah. So, what do they require for you to be able to cook there and shoot? As a as an upcoming chef, as an upcoming chef, it they don't really require it. They just require more exposure. That's basically what you're giving them. Like for uh, for exam, uh, example, in Vacus is where is located in Elmhurst, Illinois. So we teamed up as far as with them for us to be able to come in and actually cook. They already have the codes and safety codes already set for the actual kitchen good, itself. Good. It's just bringing in the chefs to be able to be able to do it. Now, mostly chefs can come in and just rent out space. So you can just come in and just rent out space and then just start cooking if they want to do a cooking show. Um, wow. Yeah. So you really technically don't need all of that. Like, for example, and, we, you know, we're going to New Orleans to actually uh, cook with a band member. And also um, one of the, his managers, you know, they're they're bringing us down there to actually cook in like a vintage house. So we since we're cooking in someone else's house, there's no certification um, behind that because we're already trained to know exactly what we should be cooking, how we should be cooking, how do we prepare our food. And that's over time in, in regards to training. So, you know, uh, when it comes down to it, I think so you don't need any oh. special insurance to guarantee if something happens and there is a fire that. Oh, you're well, so you're talking about liability insurance. Yeah, so if you're talking about liability yeah. insurance, yeah, yeah, I have that. I have that as well. So if I was to put that under, like, for example, I can put that on the special occasion events. Right. And have liability insurance and put that under there because that's considered as an event. Right. And then right. I'm the one that's the owner of it. And I can be whatever I want to with that company. Right. So right. technically cooking with Rico show is kind of the production behind the scenes and, you know, producing a film. Right. And then, you know, posting it on YouTube and, you know, putting highlight reels together to for people to be able to see my work and say, oh, yeah, we would like for you to come and do a show as well, too. And we have done that. We have done that at venues uh, for a gala. Um, and it was good. It was good. And, and, and so when you were doing the cooking, that would be a great opportunity for you to do the product placement. Yep. Um, but if it's an ingredient that is a name brand, do you just hide it on camera yeah. or do you try to get permission and say, Hey, uh, <laughs> I'd like to use your product. That's the secret. That's the secret of having little bowls. 
right? When you have little yeah. clear, uh, glass bowls, you already have whatever the season that you Kevin. want in there. You don't have to actually use the brand. Right, right. 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 Unless um, you really want to say it, yeah. Yeah. So how is, uh, now the Cooking with Rico show, uh, what what exactly are, how many shows have you done so far? Ooh. So we're up to 54 <gasps> right now. You do them yeah. weekly or? Uh, twice a month. Twice a month is when oh, we're doing it. Twice a month. Twice a month. Yes. And, and what is this that I was reading about you, uh, what about going cooking with a cause? What is that about? So the cooking for a cause is basically we want to cook for the homeless. Uh, we want to also cook. We did something for a group like for autism. Um, we're doing it for special cases. Uh, the objective of that is to be able to, you know, to to help the homeless, to feed kids, right? Kids that actually may have cancer, kids that may have, you know, certain diseases or also adults, you know, that may have, you know, certain diseases. We want to help the community. So how do we do so? Uh, people in need of, you know, some entertainment, uh, but also just, just making it, make them feel that it was, um a gift you know to them to let them know that we do appreciate them uh we appreciate as far as knowing that you have maybe a disability but you have the ability to continue to move forward with life so that's the cooking for a cause that is that we're... have you turned that into a charity it's a five is it a 501 501 C? C? no not yet that's actually the more the more we do that's when we're going to actually start building that and putting that into a 501 3c so you will be turning that yeah. into charity. So right yeah. now you're doing it just to pro bono. And and when you are cooking, say cooking for a cooking with a cause, and you're sure. cooking food and people are eating it, how do you protect yourself against? For example, when I when I was in high school, I um, my mother forced me to get a job, so I worked at Burger King so I could see all the hot guys, and I wanted to take all the waste because there was some just incredible waste. I mean, they were throwing out whoppers that were, I mean, all this food that wasn't even eaten. And I wanted to take it to the homeless shelter, but they wouldn't let me because they said that is a violation, a yes. health code violation, Correct. because the people got sick, yes. they could sue us. How are you protecting yourself against that? So one of the things is, is that when you're preparing for a certain amount of people, remember we're doing demos, we're doing shows. So right. when we're doing demos and shows, nine times out of 10, they bought their own product. And we're actually like, say, for example, a group, we're actually going to be doing, um, we have a recipe that we're going to be doing for the youth. Now, the youth itself can buy their own packaging for the rest, <clears throat> excuse me, for the recipe. So for the recipe itself, they'll get all the ingredients and they'll have it themselves. They cook along with me. Oh, okay. So there's no leftovers. Okay, so they're bringing so they're bringing their own ingredients. So if they get if they pick something that is going to get them sick or do food poisoning, um, they can't blame it on you. Correct. Exactly. <laughs> like you brought your own <laughs> shit. Don't be blaming it on me. If I, I was to cook for, for example, when I did it for the homeless, when I cooked for them. And that was the last time I cooked for 80 people by myself. And that was where certain people like to eat a certain amount like chicken. And if there was something wrong with it or if there was something that I needed to take from them, I would ask them, hey, is that good for you? And if they said no, I will take it and I will cook it to make sure that it's to their liking. Because not everybody else has the same type of taste buds, right? Just like if you go to a restaurant, how would you like it? Would you like it um, well, medium well, rare? How would you like it? So, of course, me being in the kitchen when I was there, I was still able to make sure that I was cooking to their liking. Okay. Um, so I make sure that I'm on site and I make sure that it's good. Hey, check this. Is this what the way you want it? No, if you don't, okay, let me cook it some more. How is this? And I'll make mm -hmm. sure that they're right there with me. 
um, to make that happen. But I think that'll be the last time that I'm cooking for 80 people by myself. I got to make sure I have some volunteers. That's crazy now. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, it says that you uh, pair for cooking with the calls. You, uh, it's a show that pairs celebrity cooking assistants. Uh, what celebrity cooking assistants have you had so far? So um, we haven't, we, we've had, um, oh, we were planning on doing something as far as what NASCAR race with uh, my man, Matt Jasko. I was trying to get something uh, as far as going on as far as with him. Um, but there is a um, big time um, unique sweets. I call her famous. I call her celebrity because she does so much as far as in Chicago for autism. So when we did the autism, you know, she was her and her helpers was actually on the side of me and we all cooked, you know, uh, chicken bicana uh with pasta so it was uh she was kind of my celebrity as far as here in chicago that's why i say you know we're we're looking to do more of that as well too okay oh so okay so the the celebrity assistants are to be announced so, right uh more and uh what so you're doing these uh you're filming it and it's at shelters churches and senior homes yeah so, they let you use their equipment. You go in yep. there, you cook, and do the people, they get to eat it after, right? Yeah. Yes. But do you ever bring uh, the people on camera to, <laughs> to take a little taste of it? Yes, of course. Yeah, for sure. When we did the gala, we did that for, because we did, um, we did a we did a gala that was in Bolingbrook, and we had people, and part of our reel we actually had people that was eating our food as well, too. So, yeah, for sure. Oh, I see. Yeah. Now, yeah. what's going on with this NASCAR? I didn't know you were into cars. Yeah, Tell I was. Tell me I, about that you're introducing the NASCAR moment. What is that show about? So, I've always been a NASCAR fan. Um, I've always been a race car. Ever since I was little, I wanted the go-kart. <laughs> and have I you love ever, go -kart. Have you ever driven a real race car? No. I'm oh you have no idea how much I up. really want to. Please hook, hook me up. up. I got a friend who's in New Orleans, actually in New Orleans. When Perfect. are you going to be in New Orleans? That's gonna be in June 7th. June 7th through the 10th. Okay, okay. Yeah. let me know. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I have a friend that has some sort of I'm not into cars, obviously, but I know that my friend is like, oh my god, we went to we were in the box. We're in the sky oh, yeah. box. The VIP box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh -huh. box of some sort. And you know, it goes in one ear and out the other because it doesn't interest me, but I'm like, oh, good. But now that you said the NASCAR, I'm going to try to hook you up. But I know that they have race cars that mm -hmm. you can actually pay to drive right yeah. well, is yeah. it expensive is that why you never did it it's super well cool. no i think most of the time when i was there it was um i've only done it as far as with media with them at least twice um so the chicago street race and then i went to las vegas motor speedway for south point 400 and it was so exciting when i actually got you know the chicago street race doing that the first time i was Wait, so, so happy so you were in a race car you have no. been in a race car i was race. just doing photography i was doing oh. photography and video i wish i was oh, oh man i wish God. i was but it's it's possible you don't even have you can you can rent the time to get in the race car i think we have uh we do have that at the juliet speedway that we can actually rent the car and actually drive but we have to Why take yeah. I know, I know. It's just timing. I got to do it. I have is to it, do it. Is it is it really expensive to do that? No, I think it was only like $75 an hour when I last oh. talk, uh, heard about it. I was like, that's not, oh. that's nothing. Well, let's do that as a birthday present. When's your birthday? <laughs> In December. <laughs> December what? Pearl Harbor, 7th. December 7th. All right. I'm going to work on that with B. And I'm going to try to get her and I to talk you into it and you're going to have, but I want you to film it okay. so I can put it on my show. We're okay. going to get you in a race car. I love people's dreams to come true. Thank and you. 
if you want. Yeah. But you do go to NASCAR on a regular basis and go sit and see all the cars racing. Um, so because well, since I want since I started the talk show, it's been a lot, you know, going on as far as with the talk show and also the cooking show. I really haven't got a chance to really get out to NASCAR every single place that they actually are at, but I am uh, working with NASCAR to see how I can get more involved as far as with the drivers and get more involved with interviewing a truck. They got a truck series uh, as well, what? too. So I'm trying to get more involved as far as with the what? truck series as well. Yeah. But aren't they in Indianapolis, right? In there's Indian a, there's an Indy. Cars? There's an Indy 500. Yeah, there's an Indy 500. Is that different than That's the different. Yeah. They what they usually it? do Daytona, Daytona 500. Oh, where's the NASCAR race? What state? Man, they're all over. They're all over Las Vegas. They're in um uh they just came from they were just doing Austin, uh the circuit uh, of the Americas. They got Phoenix. Man, they have uh I think they did Bristol as well too. It was they all over. They're all over. All, okay. So yeah, it's, they're all over. I didn't really understand that, but it's just like a traveling event. It's yep. a, so wherever they have a racetrack, you're saying they would they could have a NASCAR race there. Yes. One of and when you said you're gonna be in New Orleans in June. Yeah, June seventh. Uh -huh. Okay. And and are you gonna be busy every single day? Now here's what I'm thinking. I have a cousin that owns a pizza restaurant called Mr. Jim's Pizza. Okay. And I was thinking, it just popped in my head. Now, I don't know. I haven't talked to her because I just had the thought. But sure. I was just thinking, I was just thinking, what could we do where you could pop in there and maybe do a show? Because she would obviously let you do it for free. But uh, there, it's a chain in the South called Mr. Jim's Pizza. It's a chain. Okay. Of pizza restaurants okay. but maybe you could pop in there and do you know how to do pizza well i will learn definitely yeah maybe we could, <laughs> they could shoot a show and um you could shoot a show and um and we could have you doing pizza like making a pizza and i said i i'm gonna i'm going to what is that called floorboard it not floorboard it what is that called when you're working on something what's that term Spear boarded. I'm gonna oh, think I about it. Oh, I know what you're yeah, talking. Yeah. Would that be something you'd be interested oh, in? Oh, for sure. Doing? Oh, yeah, for sure. Because my sure. cousin is lovely. Her husband is lovely, and they're so much fun. And they they sing and they do the TikToks where they sing and make throw the pizza up and they sing and catch it and they do funny That's stuff. Love. So you would fit right in there. So awesome. I'm going to work on that. I'm going to talk to her tomorrow and see if. Uh, so you're June 7th to what? The 10th. To the 10th. That weekend. And, and, and what will you be doing there again? So we. So we we're know. doing. Uh, actually, we're doing um, kind of we're trying to make a live cooking show happen uh, as okay. well, too, with an audience. So we actually a uh, big shout, uh, shout out to, you know, Ty, uh, Tyron Benoit band. Um, they're actually, they came on my show. He actually came on my show, uh, when for my birthday and, um, and we started talking about cooking. So me and my team, uh, was like, Hey, we're going out to new Orleans. We got it booked and we're ready to go. Yeah. Okay. So you already have a venue and a cooking, you have everything set up to so do on, on that next day. So on Saturday we have a venue and then on that Sunday, we're still trying to figure out as far as what chefs we want to go and actually see so that can be right up the right up the alley right there for the pizza for my yep. cousin's pizza shop sure. uh -huh. yes because you could actually do an italian dish since it's pizza i mean you could do like a spaghetti and meatball or whatever you would do that's italian yeah. related yeah they would love that i'm gonna talk to her tomorrow i'm excited i'm <laughs> excited let's make it happen and then i was also thinking that when you come back to la yeah i have uh already talked to my friend ernest thomas remember raj from what's happening yes I have locked him in. He's like, all right, girl, let's do it. All right, let's do awesome. it. Okay, so we can, that would be so much fun to, yeah. to do it in Ernest's house. And we can 
talk about what's happening. Um, and he's on uh, Everybody Hates Chris. And we okay. can incorporate all that. And nice. you know, maybe we could do like a, what was popular in the 70s, like a dish from the 70s. There's so many fun things, as you well know, what we yes. could do. As long as we don't do that tacky dish that was popular, what was that green goddess lime jello that was popular? <laughs> oh my gosh, that was a mess. But there's so many fun things that we we can do. Okay. For sure. I'm, I'm excited. You got me all excited now. <laughs> so with the uh with the NASCAR thing, um, yes. I just wanted to uh yeah so are you did you dedicate like a whole show to that or are you so just we, doing that remote those are just remotes those are just remote so i'm actually dedicating a segment called nascar moments nascar moments is basically talking about a moment that people need to be aware of if whoever won or if they have a nascar foundation for like the youth the kids if they have something uh, like they had Fantasy Live for NASCAR, talked about the truck series, talked about the hall, uh, they have a truck hall of fame or cars hall of fame and all that great stuff. So I'm like, you know, Hi. these NASCAR moments. And then we're going to, we put all this collage. So we're going to put them all together and then we're going to hopefully show NASCAR what I've done. Oh, mm, I'm excited. I don't even like cars, but I'm excited <laughs> about the NASCAR. <laughs> all right. Now we've talked about your journey. As yep. a talk show host. So this is something that you are excited about and you are going to continue, right? For sure. Yes. For sure. And yeah. then uh, we talked about your journey as a chef. Yeah. What's, yeah. Your, what's your specialty, though? Your favorite, favorite <sighs> dish to cook? That is so hard. To, that is so hard. It is People because that's actually... like asking me. You can't ask a fat person what their favorite food is. <laughs> we'll eat anything that's not walking. So I know that's kind of hard for you, but maybe. Yeah, that's that's hard to ask because. All right, let's make it. Let, let's make it. What's the easiest thing to cook while shooting uh, a cooking segment? Because obviously you can't cook a bouillabaisse base, or you can't cook a French dish. That would take right. forever, or a beef bourguignon. I so, think the easiest. You know, I think the easiest one for me was the, the Cuban rice, uh, the Cuban chicken and rice. Yes, and you're I, supposed to make that for me, exactly. that chicken conio polo arozo something. <laughs> Still looking at that. Yes. Still yes. At um, okay, yeah, because I mean the chicken and Oh, honey, I made what my girlfriend Maria, Maria Helena Diaz, she gave me a recipe for this it, it chicken cone uh, uh maybe cone polo a rose anyway it's got capers in it and it's got onions and it's got uh this special uh mexican spice called uh, a rose uh something i'm just the worst at trying to explain that <laughs> anyway it turns out good I want to come on your cooking show. I want to make that. You Let's go. love it. You Let's go. love it. Let's I go. love, as I think I told you before, I love cooking all different types of food. I cook yes. Thai. I cook Chinese, French. But the worst, I've given up on French. I cannot do it. It's too much. Chinese, it's usually 15 ingredients. I have a meltdown <laughs> and I have to take different types of alcoholic beverages. To right. get uh, Greek food is easy, Mediterranean. Oh, yeah. If, but uh, the good old chicken just wins it all, right? Yeah, chicken right. for everything. Um, now, what about your film festivals? You, you wanted to talk about film festivals and how that's going. Yeah, so we just got started with, uh, and I'm, I'm, we're getting more and more as far as doing red carpet film festivals. Um, we've, done, uh, we've done two so far one for the urban short film festival and one for the chicago indycon uh we're actually taking a tr uh, a trip up to ann arbor michigan this saturday we're doing an ann arbor michigan and uh, that's going to be huge um, what, what and then, do you mean when you say you're doing you didn't explain what you're doing i'm sorry interviews so we're interviewing oh, okay. so we're doing interview conducting interviews kind of like the red carpet yeah uh, focusing more on that 
which I'm so happy that I'm talking to you about. Um, oh, so, so you obviously heard where I went to, because I'm a judge and screener for many film festivals, but this particular one, the Sholo Film Festival in Arizona, did you see? Oh, my God. Rico, I did 52 interviews in two hours. Wow. This woman was so impressed with me who watched me doing these interviews. She asked me to do press interviews for the Oscar after party on March let's, 10th, right? Let's go, yeah. Ah, but no, after that experience I had, I swear my mouth was dry. There was like, <laughs> I had gum when I started and by the time I was finished, it stuck to my lips and <laughs> I, I was being filmed, so I was like, oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> and 52 interviews in two hours. I don't wow. know how I did it. So, and you got to ask like creative questions, but Correct. what happens? I don't know if you're experiencing this yet, but uh, when I am doing the interviews, I like to ask good questions. I like Correct. to want to know what's your film about, who's yes. your character. What did you like most about the character? And I just do everything improv. Well, yeah. they got your ass on a time limit at these film festivals because they're the lines are so long yes. that they just want you to ask one or two questions. I can't do it, Rico. Yeah, I, I know it's so hard. I felt so rushed. I felt so frustrated. So when I was asked to do the press interviews for the Oscars after party, I turned it down. Everybody thinks that I'm like so crazy. And I'm like a big fool, but I just couldn't. I, I, I was having a PTSD from the other film <laughs> where I did the 52 interviews, right? I could not do it. But what are you, are you being told to you know, keep the question short and the keep how what's been working out for you. So one of the things about the short film festivals that we've been doing is having people type in their names and their their information first uh, and or for the short film festivals. Right. For the short film festivals, because they are while they're watching the film festival we're telling the directors to actually type in each one of the filmmakers that you want us to be able to interview. So we're getting all of the names in order of who's going to be coming up and actors who's going to be coming up and the directors, I'm sorry, and the organizers are bringing them to us. Mm -hmm. So That would have been nice. That so, would have been nice. I was processing what you're saying. And yeah. I'm like, son of a bitch, that would have made my job so much easier. Yep. I, I, go ahead. Yeah. Go so, ahead. <laughs> so, you know, with that being said, we're starting to do that at all film festivals. Now, not every film festival is going to be the same. But, you know, um, when we are doing a film festival, we do want to make sure we know who's coming up who's organizing these filmmakers or actors to come up and then have their name. And when we're ready to do their name, we have it on the whiteboard. They said, this is the actor, this is their name, let's get it on. Then we get right into it and then go from there. Um, but where I'm, where I'm going is where, of course, following your footsteps of where I want to be when it comes to the Oscars. That's where I want to be. Oh, I would have given you my damn job if I would have known that you had done, you wanted to do that. I could have said, well, I'm not going to do it, but here's Rico. Yeah. Oh, my I would have loved to do that. I would have loved that. to do that. You know, I'm going to put your name in the hat for next week, next year. I'm going to yeah. tell you I got somebody. I appreciate that. <laughs> Remind me, though. I, I have you have everything that we talk about where I say I'm going to do something. I will absolutely do it because I never, ever say anything and not do it. But the mind comes and goes. <laughs> <laughs> so you need to follow up and send me a list of everything that I said I was going to do. And then I go, OK, <laughs> and then I do it. So do that for me. So, so I definitely, can, definitely because that has question. to be planned a year in advance. Yes. And then what they do is they. Uh, you have Zoom meetings and they do all the preparation and stuff. So just to remind me. But yeah, I, I would have loved that. And this that film festival, well, oh my God, it was 
so this after party is so huge it's like thousands and thousands of people but the good thing is um my film it was called uh, my movie i was one of the producers on it it was called hashtag bless it was a christmas movie and the guy who i got to work with or meet rather was i love this man okay cool in the gang Sir yeah. Earl Toon, he's uh -huh. one of the founders, right? So he's going to be working on our second Christmas film, which I'm very excited about. Nice. So I'd love to introduce you to him because he would be a he's a food lover, he's a foodie. Let's go. Let's go. So, you know, when you come to LA, let me know. I don't even know if he lives here in LA. I guess I'll have to find out, but remind me on that one too, because he'd be a really good person to you know, to bring on the show. Wow. But um, so the, so you are starting to get, uh, I guess that would be called <clears throat> doing press interviews or yeah. uh, for, for the film festivals. And uh, that's fantastic. So, so far, which film festivals have you done work for? The so, short so the short film festivals were one here in Chicago. There was two in Chicago um we got accepted to the ann arbor michigan one we're looking to do uh, we got accepted to atlanta so atlanta we got an urban short film festival that we did here they're taking it to atlanta so we got that one on may 18th uh we're looking to do one in massachusetts uh that's actually coming up in june so we're looking to do that in june uh i think that's towards the end of june that we're looking to do that um film festival as well I've been trying to look for the ones that's, of course, in Hollywood, where there's little short film festivals as well, too, that's going on, that I'm going to be doing some research to actually get there. Oh, well. OK. So what you can offer on your end is, hey, I will not only do the uh, interviews, but I bring I will bring all, they don't have to do anything extra. That's the selling point because you can tell them that you're bringing your, uh, all your, your cast, your crew, your lights, yep. your, they don't have to do anything. I'm telling you, you will be able to get that out here. <laughs> I know so many people that do film festivals, but I never knew you wanted to do that. Send okay. that note to me too. Okay. And write down what you can offer so I okay. can. Um, I'm going to get you some stuff. <laughs> All right. Now, what are your upcoming goals other than what we talked about? And, oh, man. Uh, you Interesting. Got I mean, course. that's a lot. I, I know. A lot I, of stuff. I, don't, I really don't have any. I mean, Personal I think it's more. Personal goals. Are you, have you, are you married? Do you have children? No, no. Bachelor. Oh, that's good. So we can aspire to hook you up. With, no. no. Actually, women. <laughs> They will just so bring funny. you down. They will drag you down. They're too much work. <laughs> Mates in general are so needy, whether it's male uh, or female. Where are you going? Who are you texting? I need your password to your phone. Uh, oh, were you in the bathroom texting? Oh, my God. I don't even know how people are in relationships these days. Oh, A lot of it has to do with me watching, you know, the reality television shows and <laughs> Day fiance, yeah. where I swear, and everybody calls. Oh, I'm looking for my soulmate. Oh my I god, I that one more time. <laughs> and now everybody's, Oh, I'm looking for my king, I'm looking for my queen. Yeah. It's, it's, oh my, just focus on your career, right? Yeah, yeah, I think it's, I think it's mostly just. You know, when you focus on what you have going on, and I have so many things that I have going on that I'm, yeah. you know, one of them have to pop. You know, one of them have to, mm -hmm. both that's of them true. might pop. And once they do pop, you know, I think that's where the money starts flowing in and people start hiring you to come in to do, you know, the MC and talk show and things like that. And that's where I want to be. You know, I definitely want to be that. So be that guy. So your so. ultimate goal, um, is it safe to say, is that, what I, my dream for you is that you get your own talk show on yeah. the late, not one of the networks, right? Yeah. One of the networks. That's what my dream is for you. Um, 
And also side, you know, on the side of that too, to cook, you know, to cook as well too. Okay. So, or, okay. Or a, uh, maybe or a both. cooking show on the food network. Right. Okay. So I am going to be sending out all of the Irish energy and love <laughs> Thank so you. that we can get that because if you make it, then I get to bribe you into getting me Harry Styles. <laughs> you might possibly be able to have him sit on my lap. You could get a piece of his clothing. I you know how obsessed I am with this man. <laughs> So your fame and fortune bodes well for me because yeah. I'm just asking for a little tiny meeting with Harry Styles. So or Lewis or Lewis Capaldi. Lewis Capaldi. Yep, yep. That's <laughs> those are the two. Oh, Niall Horan. There you go. That's okay. what I need from you. So I, I need you. you to work harder. I will. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we covered everything. And oh, by the way, how is our darling B? Because I know she was in uh, the hospital. Is she out now? How I think she she's in a recovery stage right now. She's recovering. Big shout out to uh, Beatrice. You know, oh, prayers yeah. to her. Yeah. So she's, uh, I think she's in her recovery stage right now. So she's in a 14 day window of recovery. <sighs> I hope so. I cannot live without that woman. She yeah. has just infused herself into my life. And I love it. It's like infusing an or, or a tea, like a oolong tea, which I love. Yeah. And she's just a, the oolong infused tea now in my life. Yeah. And I just can't do without her. So what yeah. are your, oh, what happened? Okay. Oh, the technical director just reminded me we did not play your video. We were going to end the show. Now we got to play his video before we end the show. But real quick, what happened with the, weren't you out here doing the Hollywood magazine? Are you still doing that? Hollywood. Oh, so, oh, big shout out to Giovanna Salas. Um, we were actually, uh, so I was doing that as a celebrity talk show host. Uh, and that was only for a year. We did that okay. for a year and a few months. Um, okay. So I, I stopped that um, in the end of December, uh, but we still Hollywood keep it. Magazine, right? Hollywood right? Yeah, Mag Heart of Hollywood. Yeah, Heart of Hollywood magazine. She's doing some great things, man. Doing some big stuff out there, and uh, I'm proud of her. You know, she's doing a lot of great stuff as far as for that. But I started doing so much stuff that I had to, you know, uh, go a different route. But we still keep in contact with each other. She's still good people's. Wow. Still love what she's doing. So they're doing some really great stuff over there. Yeah. Uh, well, well, I uh, are you planning on coming back to LA? Yes. Uh, we're looking year? at next month. Next month. Next, next month, month I'll be in, in April. Yeah. I'll let you know. Yeah, I didn't know you were coming out here. What are you doing coming out here in April? <laughs> so What's I'm actually, you, it's, it's, it's crazy. I'm going out there to actually start networking with uh, a lot of the people that was actually on my show. So I'm going to, um, I'm going out there to see Beverly Pomerantz. Uh, I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah. she's at every party I have. Yeah. Uh, Beverly and I are like thick as thieves. She yeah. comes to every event I have. Oh, you yeah. will love her. So I definitely, okay. yeah, we was at, when we came out there before, we actually met Beverly Pomerantz and Brenda Cooper, you know, the, the stylist for the nanny. Uh, yeah, the show, yeah, the nanny. For yeah, Fran, yeah. Right? Fran, uh huh. So we're coming out there because we're going to be setting up some time and hopefully I'll be able to see you finally. Uh, yes. Well, I'm gonna text Beverly as soon as we get off this interview, and yeah, tell, I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna send you guys the dates. I'll send you the date. Yeah, yeah. She, I don't think she knows we know each other. I don't think she knows because right now I'm. Um, she's casting for. Uh, remember Urkel from? Uh -huh. um, she yeah, told me Urkel. that. Yeah, she's casting for that show, so I'm sending a couple people her way and um we her birthday either passed or is coming up so we're going to be taking it out the, it passed all yeah, right yeah, yeah. so we owe her a birthday dinner so i'm gonna see if she wants to get together and maybe uh you can we can all do it together we can have yeah. like a big, you know birthday thing and oh, then okay. i can invite Ernest, and that way you can meet him and then deal with him directly about maybe coming and doing the cooking show at his house. Nice. 
there's lots of activity. You got to remind, please remind I me will. of the dates, right? I will. <laughs> this is going to happen. Um, and how long are you staying? Uh, four days. I'll be four there days. three, three to four days. Yep. So mm -hmm. you have every single day though booked? Or... No, no, not yet. Okay. Not yet. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let me know because I got plans. Oh, my husband, he broke his um, his uh, wrist and his hand and his ulnar. So um, he's, but he's still driving. So I don't think it'll be a problem getting to wherever we're going. And we'll make it happen. All right. Yeah, so we'll we're going to show some videos because we talked about your shows and it's yeah. like, I forgot the video. Okay. So the first clip we're going to show is for your cooking, um, for your regular talk show okay. Rico no suave yeah the, the second one is going to be for your cooking show now there was a two minute video and a three minute did you want to show both or just one and if so which can, one? i think one of them was for the cooking for calls and i think the other one uh is just a regular uh cooking one that my team put together so okay Either one. It doesn't okay. matter. You do all three if you wish. Okay. Let's do, we'll do all three. And okay. then the last one is something that I saw on one of my 90 Day Fiance shows that's mentioning your name, which you're going to be shocked about. So I'm going to play that last. Okay. All right. So okay. Albert, we're going to play all three <laughs> video clips starting with uh, his talk show and then play the two cooking shows and then last play the clip from uh, 90 Day Fiance that uh, is mentioning Rico Suave. Rico, Rico. Yeah. out of here but i want to thank you guys so much for being part of the show today if you like it and you love it that means you can share it until next time everybody i'll see you guys later welcome back welcome back welcome back to another great episode of cooking with rico show So good. Sausage Town. Saucy, baby. That is some beautiful pieces of chicken, I tell you. in my mouth right now everybody let's go mm. boy this is good
Welcome back to another great episode of Cooking with Rico. I am here with Purely Meats, and today we got something I want everybody to get your weapons out to the right of me. My man, Matt Ronan. You ready to do this? I'm ready, man. Here we go. I'm going to add my, uh, my, my seasoning as well. You know, it's really beautiful, bro. Um, <laughs> it's so good to, you know, that's why I like whispering to the meat. The meat whisper. You know, it's, like, it's okay. It's all right. As, you rub it, it, as I rub it in. <laughs> and then, you know, I really love, I really love the way that you look. Right? So we're going to cook today some chicken parmesan picata. Forget about mm. it. Right? Rectangle. There you go. I like yeah. that curry. Yeah. Well, you good with those knives, man? You see what Perlita did? Oh, she made a whole salmon. Okay. So, <laughs> so you you want to cut a little bit more. Just like, there you go, We got a nice little, you know, bring that up, let everybody know. There it is, there it is, okay. Season both sides. Welcome to Jisha. Yeah, it's just massage it. Yes, yeah, massage it. Can somebody do this to my back? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Just don't season her back with a dobo. <laughs> Chicken thighs, I think they're ready. Let's see how Greek it is. Woo! Look at that, baby. Oh, wee! Look at those babies. All right. Hey, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. And let me know what you guys think. If you want me to cook something, just say, hey, Rico, cook something like this. <laughs> Let's get it. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you. Hi, Rico Suave. Your dad is a nutcase. Yeah. I like that. That was good. That was good. I like that. I wish he would have said no, Swami. But as soon as I heard it, I said, oh, oh my God, cute. I gotta put that in. Um, oh my God, Rico, that food you cook, my God, it's so beautiful. Thank you, you are very good. I am the worst at plating. Plating is everything. It is, it is. so important. It I is. mean, you can make a bunch of great food, but it's all in the plating. Yes. So, oh, you have, there was, it's such variety. I mean, you cook Greek and you cook Italian and you cook Cajun and you cook, I don't know what it was where he almost set that woman's eyebrows aflame, but <laughs> it looked like. That was, uh, that was Saganaki. Saganaki, there you go. <laughs> oh my gosh, your shows are so fun. I, I, I don't even know. I got to get over there and subscribe, people. Yep. You're so exciting. I don't know how you do it, but you're doing it. You're Thank rocking, you. you're rolling, you're making it happen. And there is no question in my mind that you will be a famous something. Either Thank a famous you. chef or a famous talk show host or both. We're gonna, we gotta keep fighting. Yes, Right. I All will. Right. Well, let you. me make sure that, uh, and then follow up with me because we have got to make that happen. Let's go to subscribe at the, go to the Rico No Suave Show, YouTube at Rico No Suave Show, YouTube Cooking with Rico Show, uh, quick Cooking with the Rico. What the hell did I write? Cooking with Rico Show. Yeah. That's correct. Facebook, Rico Suave Show. Instagram, Rico Suave Show. Keeping it consistent. And Instagram, <laughs> Cooking with Rico Show. I love it. You are doing everything right. There is nothing that I could even pinpoint or poke or think where I say, hmm, maybe 
you should do that. Nothing. You're doing everything right. You, you are on the Oriental Express. Thank you. I you appreciate are that. on the highway to heaven. Thank you, love. I don't know how many other things I could say, but you're you're gonna you're, don't worry. Don't worry that you're not doing it all. You're a very ambitious person. You've got a lot of dreams and you've made half or maybe over half come true already and you got a great team and i really think that it's just a matter of time but it's coming soon yes it's, thank you it, it's gonna happen thank rico you. no suave that's right Pr priscilla all suave says <laughs> that you're gonna make it thank you so much rico for being thank on you, the love. show god i love you so much this was supposed to be an hour show what the hell did we do <laughs> Nine hours and nine hours. So what's that? Two hours and 13 minutes. Because I can't get enough of you, Rico No Suave, because you're all suave. Thank you, me, Rico All Suave. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Have a Thank great you, day. Give me my love, and we will. will make it happen. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, love. Bye. See you later. Bye, oh, babes. <laughs>